There are many different forms of communication that we could potentially study, starting with intrapersonal communication, interpersonal communication, group communication, public communication, and mass communication. So first, let's talk about intrapersonal communication. Intrapersonal communication is communication with oneself using internal vocalization and reflective thinking. So this is uh, those conversations that you have with yourself in your head. And generally speaking, they are triggered by some internal or external stimulus, but they take place only inside our heads. We are the only ones who can hear these conversations, so to speak. And Intrapersonal communication can help us to do things like build and maintain our self-concept. It can help us to let off steam, to process our emotions, to think through something, or to rehearse what we plan to say or do. And generally speaking, intrapersonal communication isn't really planned and there isn't really a defined goal when it comes to intrapersonal communication. It's just that conversation in the back of our heads that's telling us, oh, I should do this and then after that I should do this and maybe I should get some lunch and those sorts of things. Interpersonal communication, on the other hand, is communication that happens between people whose lives mutually influence one another. So this is communication that happens between you and a friend or you and a family member, you and your partner, those sorts of things. And interpersonal communication can be planned or unplanned, but generally speaking, it is fairly structured, which is influenced by different social expectations. And interpersonal communication can meet relational needs by communicating the uniqueness of that specific relationship. It helps us to not only build those relationships, but maintain them as well. And a lot of times, however, we do see instances of miscommunication or conflict in interpersonal communication. Next, we have group communication. So this is communication that happens among three or more people who are generally interacting with one another because they have a shared goal in mind. And when you think of group communication, you might think of those dreaded group projects that you've had to do in your various classes over the years. And these group these uh, instances of group communication, while they can be frustrating, um, tend to be really useful experiences and they help prepare you for the group work that you might uh, come into contact with in more professional settings. But the communication that happens in groups tends to be more intentional and more formal than interpersonal communication because there is that shared goal. Everyone is working together to try to meet that goal. And so they're much more task focused, right? Individuals are focused on their position within the group. And so we are trying to just get, make this thing happen when we are in a group of three or more people. And up next, we have public communication. Public communication is what we tend to think of as public speaking, but it's a sender-focused form of communication in which one person is typically responsible for relaying or conveying information to an audience. So if you think of a typical classroom setting, for example, the teacher is giving a public speech to her students, to the audience. and you can also think of a TED Talk where somebody is up on the stage giving a speech about their particular skill set to a group of individuals who are interested in that skill set. And generally speaking, the um, connections or rather the um, communication in public communication tends to be much more intentional. It tends to be much more formal. It's much more structured. It's goal oriented. And so you can see that we are getting more structured and more regimented as we go down this list. And finally, we have mass communication. Mass communication is public communication that is transmitted to many people through print or electronic media. So we tend to see this in the form of television, websites, 
newspapers, blogs, social media, that sort of thing. Um, radio, podcast, books, all of those count as mass communication. But the point is that some form of technology is required. It's not just a person standing on a stage speaking to an audience. It's a person speaking into a camera, which then gets broadcast to television sets. Or it's a person sitting down at a desk and writing up a news story, which then gets published on a website. And so there's an intentionality that goes into transmitting these messages because it requires extra steps in order to convey that message. And so it differs from the other forms of communication in that way. There's less personal connection between the speaker and their audience when it comes to mass communication, right? There's a disconnect there. And so as you can see, the further we get down this list, not only is it more structured and more regimented, but it also gets less personal, right? With intrapersonal communication, you're talking to yourself. Interpersonal communication, you're talking to one other person. Group communication, you're talking to three other people or more. Public communication, you're talking to a large audience. And math communication, you're talking to a large audience through some kind of technology. So these are the different forms of communication that we interact with on a daily basis and thus are the different forms of communication that we could potentially study.